Hi, welcome back. This is a very quick tutorial on how to make pore structures in Blender. So let's get straight into it. So here I have just a basic scene and we're going to do a lot of the work in geometry nodes. So let's go ahead and open up the site window and make this the geometry node editor. Let's add a cube just to hold our geometry. Create a new geometry node tree and let's call it porous material. And so there's only a few nodes that you really need to get this effect going. The first thing you're going to do is disconnect the input geometry and search for a uh, volume cube. Let's go ahead after the volume, add a volume to mesh node. And just some more aesthetic things. Let's add a set shade smooth. And finally, a set material node just to be able to apply materials later. And with that, most of the work is done. Effectively, what we are doing is creating a volume cube whose density we can control using the density input. This might be easier to see if I just toggle into the 3D viewport. And so there we have a volume. We then convert that volume into a mesh. Shade smooth. And then just apply a material. And to create the 3D porous material effect, we're going to add some textures to control the spatial distribution of density that gets converted to a mesh. So just to get started, let's go ahead and create uh, our first porous material. To do that, we need to add some textures. So let's start by adding a Voronoi texture and plug that into the density value of the volume cube. And you can already see something is happening. It's some dimple effects going. To make the effect more pronounced, you want to add yourself a color ramp node and start bringing in the black part and the white part closer together. And now you're starting to see already the makings of a porous material. What you might want to do, add an integer node and connect it up to the resolution values of the volume cube and set it to something a little bit higher like 64. And so now it's just a matter of playing around. So you can change the scale of this porous looking thing by changing the scale of the texture. So if I lower the scale to something like 1, uh, this looks like cheese. Um, but you can start scaling this up a bit. And you can get different types of porous effects going quite easily. Within the Voronoi texture, there's a couple of settings that you can play around to get more different types of porous shapes. Choose a uh, distance to edge. After you do that, you might need to play around again with the color ramp. But here, for example, you get this nice uh, individual grain effect. If I lower all this down, uh, the black side all the way down, play around with the white settings. Now you get this very nice effect of a uh, more cell effect. You get individual domains uh, packed closely together. And you can make those domains more or less separated by moving this white part of the color ramp so either closer or further from the black half. Another useful option that you can try, rather than distance the edge, go ahead and select smooth F1. And again, let's play around with the color ramp a bit. If I bring this in, you can start to see all the, the globular parts. Let's invert it the other way around, maybe something like this. And under the type of Voronoi texture, you have beside scales, smoothness and randomness. Keeping randomness to one, let's go ahead and drop the smoothness all the way down. And now this time, rather than angular cell domains, you get ball-like structures. Again, using the color ramp, you can change how connected they are. Bringing this black side all the way to the left will allow you to create individual smaller domains and filling them back up by bringing it to the right. Let's say, for example, we want to create some kind of layered porous material. So something we can do, keeping this Voronoi texture going, but now let's change a bit the position vector that gets plugged into the texture. So by default, the Voronoi texture has a vector input, and if you don't specify anything, it basically assumes the position attribute to be plugged in. So if I, for example, pull out and add a position, it does nothing. It basically already assumes that this position is what gets plugged in. But now this allows us to do some vector math. So go ahead and add a vector math. Change that to multiply. Keep the, the multiplying factor for x and y to 1. Now if I change the scale on the z direction, so this allows you to create, for example, a layered effect. Let's also try lowering the scale down a bit, something like this. Again, you can use the color ramp to change how those layers look, whether they're continuous or discontinuous. 
And so really it's just a matter of playing around with what you want to plug in to this density input for the volume cube to create yourself a bunch of different porous materials. And that's basically it. Hopefully you find this useful. Uh, just a very quick setup to be able to get porous structures using geometry nodes uh, in just a couple of seconds. Please give this video a like and a thumbs up if you found it useful. Subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.